Hi guys, so this is a quick walkthrough on how to use the latest Logo Grid Generator version 2.1. So if we open the preference tab, you can see we finally have a slider for grid line sensitivity. What grid line sensitivity does is let's for this sake, let's just turn on outlines and grid lines. If we have a, a low grid line sensitivity, you can see we have vertical grid lines and horizontal. If we put it to medium, again, we still have horizontal and vertical grid lines. And if we turn it to high, we have vertical and a few more horizontal grid lines. So grid line sensitivity reacts differently according to the angles of the logo design. So for example, on the low grid line sensitivity, it would be very rigid. So it would only pick up completely straight, um, completely horizontal and completely vertical grid lines, and then it would create the grid lines. On a medium, it will kind of, it will work with completely straight, vertical and horizontal, and also kind of allow more room for error. So if you have an awkward angle, for example, um, if we was to generate a grid line for this, you can see it generates. But if we was to do it like this on a low sensitivity, you can see it won't generate. But if we was to do it on a medium, you can see it will generate. So when you have awkward angles like this and less predictable um, angles within your logo, I would recommend going from medium to high. And lastly, for the high sensitivity, you can see how there is more grid lines um, and this works for circular shapes. So for example, if we have a circular shape here and we was to create, um, let's say medium grid line sensitivity, no grid lines will be created because there's no vertical horizontal lines. It just doesn't work. But if we turn up the grid line sensitivity to high, you can now see vertical and horizontal grid lines. So this works on the edges of rounded shapes. And this looks very good for a logo such as this. You have the whole grid line coordinates. Some designers prefer this. So I thought it would be a good idea to just incorporate this functionality in the extension. Now moving on to circular trajectories. So this is a feature um, everyone has been waiting for. Um, it definitely took longer than um, um, anticipated and it's a lot more complicated than, than you'd think. So circular trajectories is simply the circular grid lines of a logo. So let's just say we put the grid line sensitivity to low. Circular trajectories, in order to use this, grid lines must be on. Um, it only comes under the grid lines, um, grid component. So to turn it on, it automatically comes off. But when you turn it on, you can just simply click the toggle. And then you have a slider as well. You have minimal to complex. I would avoid doing complex. I would always keep it around minimal. For some cases, you can experiment and go higher. So for example, if we do minimal and we just do generate, you can see um, a beautiful circular grid has been created. Um, doing this manually would take very long and it won't be as accurate. Um, I don't think you can even do it manually. I think you have to do a, a, lot, of, a lot of guessing. Um, yeah, and it's just very, very tedious. So. Imagine how much time this just saves just doing this. Not only that, but also you're able to spot errors that you wouldn't have um, spotted. I think circular trajectories, circular errors are harder to identify than um, straight errors, rectangular or square errors, just because of the, the radius and the circumference is very hard to visually um, identify because optically is very, the optical balance for those things for like circular shapes is a lot harder. So you can see how simple that was. And last, we have a functionality called number of circles per curved line. I would only recommend using this depending on the logo that you have. So for example, this is such a very simple um, circular logo with only a few curved lines. So if I was to do like number of circles and I was to increase this, and I was to generate, nothing much here would change because the logo is quite simple. So I would say start increasing the complexity and the number of and playing around with this setting 
when you're not happy with the results. So for example, you can just go in and just learn more about how this drop down menu works. And just quickly showing you the slider for complex, if we was to increase that and we was to um, generate, you can see that it starts to really repeat a lot of circles. So again, I would avoid using this, just depends on the type of load you have. Again, if you're not happy with the results that you're getting on the basic low recommended settings, then I would start to say, think about experimenting later. So now moving on to another example, you can see here, if we was to simply just generate beautiful grid lines, perfect, but you can see multiple circles. Although you would have expected one circle, one circle, you can see multiple circles. And the reason for this is I had actually created this logo a while back, so I wasn't as experienced. And there was clear errors in, in the logo. So I must have used two circles just to create this part, two circles for this part, two circles for this part. And this was the end, the tail of the logo. So I just simply made a rectangle and then I just like rounded off the logo. So this was like the best, most accurate part. But this circular trajectory function really just pinpoints the errors that you have in your logo. There is no way you would have been able, it would have been extremely hard to tell that this shape here is not a perfect circle. This you could tell because obviously there's two anchor points, but something like this, you just, there is no way that I can, can tell that there's, um, there is multiple circles used here. So now what I can do, if I was, if I had done this at the end of a client project, I could now literally identify these errors, sorry, these errors and recreate the logo, ensuring that I only make sure I'm using one circle for each part of the, the snake, for each part of the body. And that would make the logo a lot more accurate. So that's how useful this is, because again, there is no way you would be able to tell that these parts of the logo is just not accurate. Now, moving on to a final example, we have a logo here, everything seems fine. If it was to generate, you see it seems good, everything seems cool. We have a bit of a large circle there, but obviously you can change that depending on um, the results. However, if I was to increase the grid line sensitivity, you can see something new has appeared. And that is a new layer called potential errors. So this potential errors just identifies anything weird, anything that might be inconsistent. So like, for example, there is a slight gap here. And I believe that the angle here is not repeated. So I must have, when building this logo, I must have done something that's not the same as this. Um, I use an isometric grid. And I think the isometric grid I was using was kind of funny, was kind of off. And when you make isometric grids, they're actually not always perfect um, in Adobe Illustrator. You could, if you make one slight error, um, everything can kind of be a bit weird. Like some parts of the logo can be a bit weird when you're like creating the isometric grid. So if this, if you come across a potential error like this, this won't happen for all logos, but just for some that the system can currently read, I would recommend completely rebuilding the logo and making sure that everything you do is you're taking you, you have a close eye on every step that you take like for example there is a circle here a small circle here but there isn't one here so it, it's clear that there is i've done something different on this side in comparison to that side and that could have been based on the grid that i had used as well so so yeah so that's really it for the preference tab um, we have the grid line sensitivity slider, which allows you to adjust how grid lines um, react, which is great for different type of logo design styles and different type of logo designs. And then we have circular trajectories, which you can toggle on and off. You don't always have to use this. Again, the toggle was there because not everyone wants to use this. And sometimes you just don't really want circular trajectories. And then lastly, we have the number of circles per curved line. Again, you can look into the into these details and see um, how it how it works. If for some reason you're having any issues, please feel free to visit our support page and you can have you can see some solutions there. If you're still not able to find a solution, please feel free to fill out the form 
within the support page and we'll reply as soon as possible. Thank you and let us know if you have any questions.